Recently relocated by the Green Street stop on the Orange Line deep in Jamaica Plain, Bikes Not Bombs, a 19-year-old environmentally concerned grassroots nonprofit organization, is a bike shop, an educational center, and a social center for bikers in the Boston area. Hello, Bikes Not Bombs. In Boston, traffic congestion is a major issue that has been under construction since the induction of the interstate system. Bikes Not Bombs proposes an alternate method of transportation, bikes. In the rush hour gridlock, the only things moving are bikes and pedestrians. Even though they use no gas, bikes still create waste. But Bikes Not Bombs runs donation drives that fix that problem, where they take in broken and new bikes of all sizes and makes to create a massive pool with which to produce functional cycled bikes. I had a van, so I became the uh the bike donations coordinator and drove around and picked up bikes here and there from folks. We, we call this bike flattening and uh, it's, it kind of sounds at first like it has a negative connotation but really what it means is we're breaking the bike down and making it as narrow as possible and as low as possible because that way when we ship them overseas we can get in as many as, as, uh, as, many as possible into an intermodal container. And we pay about $4,500 to send one of those containers and so the more bikes we can get in the cheaper it is per bike to send them. We pack it tightly with bikes, and then we stick wheels into the cracks, and then in the cracks between the wheels, we put in parts like seat posts or handlebars or cranks. We spend about $20 per bike for local transportation, processing, storage, and sending the bike overseas. So um, we fundraise some of that money from other sources, but we try to get $5 per bike from the folks who actually donate them. It encourages folks to actually donate a bike to us and try to help our mission, as opposed to just, oh, I've got this junk in my garage I want to get rid of. This truck uses biodiesel, which is transesterified vegetable oil. It's vegetable oil that's been chemically processed to behave like diesel fuel. It's basically the same relatively low viscosity at a wide range of temperatures. But if I started it up, it would smell like french fries. When the truck is loaded and the engine started, it heads straight for the bike shop, where the cream of the crop is carried in to be fixed and sold. After that, the rest of the bikes are sent into one of many storage units to be sorted, then processed for spare parts. Some of these parts make it back to the shop, where they can be used to create marginal profit preparing bikes to be sold. Carl, by the way, he's the founder of Bikes on Bombs. He started in 1984, and he was outraged that the U.S. was um, basically waging a proxy terror campaign against the, uh, the democratically elected government of Nicaragua. And he said, why don't we send them bikes instead of bombs? And that's how we got our name. Carl defied the embargo that existed at the time against uh, Nicaragua and shipped bikes down there through Costa Rica. Um, I think last year we sold around 500 bicycles, which means 500 recycled. You know, 500 bikes that got donated were totally refurbished and sold. I'd say around 400 or so. Where bikes got worked on in some capacity, some of that very small things, and some of that, you know, complete overhauls, much more intensive labor. You know, all the frames, of course, are used and recycled. A lot of what actually gets replaced is sort of smaller, lighter, you know, cables and housing and things which have a lot less mass to them. So most of the bike is recycled. Um, having said that, like the new parts that we do put on are often some of the, you know, can be the more expensive ones too. So a lot of the bikes are, you know, have around uh, like $100 or so in retail parts on them and they sell for around 200 And specifically Bikes Not Bombs is sort of kind of one of the more interesting and most successful and longest running and most effective sort of like community bike shop as far as sending bikes overseas, as far as advocacy, as far as teaching bicycle skills, and as far as just recycling bikes and getting them out of the waste stream and back sort of into use. So I guess those are the things that kind of inspire me or attract me to the job. So I was in Malden and I, uh, I found this bike in the, uh, the trash and uh, I was moving out of Malden, so I picked up that bike and a couple other ones that were just, uh, uh, you know, collecting dust and cobwebs and whatnot in a garage in Malden that, you know, my landlord had. I brought him down here, and then I gave it to Carlos. And uh, Carlos took this bike, 
and uh, he put new tires on it, new brakes on it. He uh, cleaned up the rack and cleaned up in between it and everything else. So ever since then, this thing's been my horse. It's been my point A to point B. I mean, we're a great way to sort of tie in a lot of different aspects of your life, such as concerns about the environment, concerns about, you know, political concerns with, you know, how cities are laid out, how people get around cities. Uh, Boston's definitely not a bike-friendly city. Um, it's a cool city, and it could be, you learn a lot riding a bike in the city. <laughs> you learn pretty quick. It's a good exercise and awareness to ride a bike in the city, but, you know, it's doable, and it's a great way to get around. You know, I can get here from Watertown, which is about 10 miles away, as fast on my bike as I can driving. It used to be that you just have road bikes and mountain bikes and hybrids, and uh, now there's all these like cool like city-oriented bikes and commuting-oriented bikes and these like sort of faster hybrids, which is great because there's sort of this return of utilitarian bikes. You know, it's not just it's not just for recreation or for competition anymore, which is a good sign. We have. BMX bikes and small mountain bikes that are used in our earn a bike program, which is where uh, inner city teens come in and learn all about how to ride safely. And they choose a bike, they take that bike apart completely, they learn all about the system, they put it all back together, and then they get to take that bike home. One day I was rolling in the bike shop, right? The bike shop was closed. It goes, I'm closed. And then Matt, this guy named Matt, asked me, how old am I? And I told him, and he says what, that they just started a program. He wants me, he'll be here like me if I join. And so I sticked around, I looked around, they were doing mechanics and stuff. And so I joined it in. So I got a point to up bikes and bumps. You know, Wednesday night is volunteer night. There's always a good amount of people in there. They're the ones that really do all the processing, all the donations that come in. And those are the bikes that are gonna get shipped um, overseas or used for the youth programs. And then they also deal with a lot of loose parts too and uh, we have a you know a handful of really dedicated volunteers who 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 works basically part time as volunteers um they don't work i need to put the wire back yeah i need to put the wire back then put it under there I like to ride around the city. I think buses, if anybody's going to ride the bus, it should be lower than 250. That's crazy. I see why my mom needs to buy a car. So I think a bike is worth everyday fixing and everyday getting around from A to B. We're hoping to do a training program um, that basically takes uh, pairs up two people. One would be or of a, a more experienced uh, mechanic and the other would be a new employee or uh, one of the kids from Voked. They work together pretty, pretty much all day and build bikes together so that they really get to do everything you know with, with somebody kind of looking over their shoulder and answering questions and teaching them new things. One of the nice things about working here is that we we work with so many different kinds of bikes you know it's not just new stuff. My, my skills got so good I can just do my own bike. My mechanic skills is up, you know? You name it, I can do it. There's a lot of problem solving and, and a lot of learning about older stuff too, which is cool. The kids alongside volunteers also help with loading containers to be sent overseas. These containers get sent to such countries as Ghana, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Venezuela, and many other countries including South Africa. And an organization from Vermont called the Global Community Initiatives, was interested in doing this project in South Africa. They had been to South Africa in previous years and um, talked to local communities and come up with ideas for projects they could do. And they picked one. So Bikes Not Bombs signed on to be for technical support for the project and to provide the bikes. Bikes Not Bombs, check it out. Whatever you don't want, you're going to throw it out. Let it come here and it'll end up going to some folks in some other countries or some folks who need bikes a lot worse than you do.